Let's carry on with the file from our previous example and let's create some geometry for the tank and for sections of the motor. We're going to start a sketch on our default plane. So we're using the YZ plane again and we're going to use our line tool to start generating just some regions where we want to keep space for the gas tank. So we're going to come down, get sort of close to the motor, we'll come back over here and again just sort of give it a restriction. It doesn't have to be exact, we're not adding any dimensions here, but we need to leave enough room so that the frame doesn't start to generate up in this area because we need to keep it free for this specific size of gas tank. We also need to have some regions in front of the motor where we have room for things like an air box and the throttle bodies for the fuel injection system. So I'm just going to come down and start to draw in this direction and then come back through the motor and then we'll come back up inside of this frame mount point and up toward this line right here so that way we complete the profile. And you'll notice that if we zoom in it, it actually snapped to geometry where I didn't want it to. So I'm going to select this constraint, hit delete on the keyboard and bring it up to this line because really I want to finish off that profile. So that way we have those regions here and if we want to restrict the bottom portion of the frame as well, so if we want to follow loosely the lines of the original, I can pull this up a little bit, we can create that as well. So we have enough room for things like oil coolers, but we can come down and maybe come back a bit farther and then come down to this line here. And then from here, we want to come forward and back up. And again, I'm using very rough geometry here. I'm not going in and dimensioning everything, giving it these criteria, because I know that the software is trying to go from this region here directly to these points. So realistically, it's going to follow a straight line or a fairly straight line to between these two points and a straight line here. So it's not going to necessarily try to create geometry in these regions anyways, but just in case we have some geometry that shoots out in those areas, we want to make sure that we restrict it. So this is going to allow us to create a few extrusions. The first is going to be the tank, which is going to come out farther than the frame. And again, this is going to be a new body and it's going to be symmetric. We just want to make sure it extends enough so that we, we have all the areas covered that we need. I'm going to bring that sketch back and then create another extrude with this region. So I'll use E on the keyboard. And this is going to come out to the areas of our frame mounts. So we want to take it all the way to this edge here. So I'm going to just put that number back a bit and I want to select this boss here. Now if you need to, again, we can hide geometry. Sometimes it can be kind of hard to select that face. We can also go two directions. So we're going to do two sides. And the other side is going to go to the back face here. I'm going to hold down the left mouse button and I can use that face or that vertex to take it up to here. We'll make this of course a new body for now. And let's make sure that it did go exactly where we wanted it. So for direction one, the extent for our distance is going to be, um, it's not going to be 101.54. We need to go back and we need to make that selection and make sure that it is going exactly where we need. And then we can say, okay. And then we'll create this last extrude here on the bottom. And we'll take these out. And again, this is just going to be a restriction for the frame. This one can go out a bit farther. We'll do two sides and we'll do new body. So the other direction is we'll make these ones symmetric, just like we did before and everything looks good there. We'll say okay. You can see kind of with the second extrude that it didn't go to both sides. It just ended up going on one side and that's okay because we can mirror it or we can always go back in and we can make an edit of this feature. So distance two, we can do nine minus 98.46 or we can do positive 98.46 depending on which direction we chose. And you can see that now it's going to the other side, which is not completely where it needs to go. It looks like this might actually be 
100 millimeters exactly. Another thing that we can do directly in here is we can use the interference detection between components. And we can see that we do have some overlap here. So these are areas where we want to make sure that we take care of because if we have our obstacle geometry and we have our preserved geometry overlapping, it will produce problems for us. So we're going to come back and we're going to modify this and we'll make this 98.46 on this side and we'll make it 100 on this side and then we'll run interference detection again between this block and we'll grab both sides and check it. So now we see that we have no interference between those. I do want to mention a few other tools real quick. Inside of Create, we have a connector obstacle. And if we have hardware in our file, this is a great tool where we can select hardware and it'll help us create that obstacle geometry, those primitives based on our hardware. So if you have a hex head bolt or um, a hex nut, it can take those and it can help create that, that primitive form of it. So we don't have to have all of the facets and faces and geometry when we really want a simplified version. Inside of modify, we also have replace with primitives, which allows us to select things like the tire and create a cylinder representation of it. So again, that helps us with taking what could be a complex model and creating those basic representations. From here, we're going to combine these three bodies. I'm going to make them red. And then I want to get rid of some of these hard edges. I want to add fillets because I don't want any instance where we have generative body that comes up to a hard edge. So I'm going to add fillets to these leading edges as well, as well as this edge underneath on both sides. And then I'll do it on this, on this back side as well. So that way all those edges round out nice and smooth. I'm going to add one more fillet actually. I'll, I'll go ahead and I'll add a fillet to these edges and I'll make it a little bit smaller. We'll do 10 millimeters there and we'll say okay. Now that we have all these created, we can go into our obstacle geometry and start selecting all the things that we created as obstacles. So these are going to be areas around the stem that we created, areas on the outside of the mounting points for hardware. And because we have additional geometry that is outside of our model, such as these timing covers, part of the engine case and the clutch cover, as well as on the left hand side, this engine case here, we want to make sure that we select those or that we go back into our sketches and create primitive versions of those. They are fairly simplified with the exception of this clutch cover, which I'm, I'm going to deselect. So everything there is fairly simplified in terms of its geometry. So be careful not to grab anything too complex like the actual clutch plate on the inside, but uh, grabbing some of this geometry is going to give us the representation that we need. We might find that we need a bit more back here uh, because there is geometry back here that we need to be aware of. So we can come in and we can try to select that portion of the case, but if it is complex, then really it's a situation where we want to go back into edit model. We simply want to create a sketch on the back side here, and then we want to extrude that. And we want to take this entire geometry up to the back edge of this boss, and we'll create it as a new body. So that way when we come back out here, we can go back to our obstacle geometry and we can add it. And that way a frame won't be created in between there. It'll keep those spaces clean. One more region where we can kind of see once we're back here in the generative design workspace is the area for the shock. So again, we'll go back into edit model. We are going to hold down the left mouse button and select this face to create a new sketch. And again, we'll just use that geometry in an extrude. And for our distance, we'll go hold down the left mouse button and go to this face and create a new body. So again, if we finish the model edits and we select our obstacle, 
now we have a region between the shock that will allow us to basically preserve enough space for it to attach. So now that we have all that geometry, let's go ahead and navigate back to a left view. We'll fit to screen and we'll save our file so we can move on to the next step.